Okay, good morning students and welcome to this class of supervision and leadership of social service organization. Uh, this is Henrietta Newton Martin with you and I'm a legal practitioner and I've got a background of philanthropic uh, uh, experience as well and that's how um, I'm teaching you this subject. Now, before that, uh, before we move further, uh, let me just tell you a little bit of uh, you know, the rules of this class. Uh, classes will go on as every one they being the first class. Okay, so the classes will go on every week, every Thursday at the same time, 8.30 a.m. your time. And uh, today is the first class, of course. There's going to be eight lectures and the duration of each class would be for one hour. It may move on for more than hour, uh, depending upon the type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the subject matter that we are dealing with. The, the depends upon the chapter, the length of the chapter, and so on. We'll try to make this class as interesting as possible. Um, yet another factor is that class participation is encouraged. Uh, you are free to ask any questions um, at the end of the class we can have classroom interaction as well. Now, apart from that, uh, with respect to joining the class, you'll have to be here on time, that is 8.30 a.m. your time. Uh, there is a buffering of five minutes for the others to enter. I would wait for five minutes. Probably in my discussion, I would wait also up to seven minutes, uh, giving a chance to others to you know, come and join the class. And after that, of course, we are going to take off with our lectures. I'm sure you know that if you have gone through your course description that uh, attendance carries marks. So even the classes that you will be attending, uh, there'll be allocation of marks for that as well. Now, that apart, your classroom participation and how you interact in the class I'll be bearing that in my mind as well. I'll be uh, recording uh, it for myself as well about every student, how you interact in the class and your classroom participation. And uh, that also would be, you know, I would be calculatively allotting marks for your final exams in the sense like, uh, I'll be adding it to the overalls. So this is it. And uh, next is if you have any concerns during you know, during the course of this, uh, you know, the teaching of the subject throughout any time, you can approach me, you can send me a message, it's not a problem, or you could also voice out your concern through your class leader. I've seen that you have a class leader, you can voice out your concern to your class leader and the class leader can get in touch with me. Of course, you're welcome also to get in touch with me anytime. So this is about it. And we will begin with the class. I'll just divide the video into two. Uh, so today we will learn about, of course, leadership in social service organizations. I understand you're from uh, social, uh, I mean, service background. You're pursuing your masters of social welfare. So you already understand what is social service and you also, I'm sure you got insight into what are social service organizations. Probably you're already part of it. Now, what is the role of leadership in social service organization? That's what we are going to delve in into this subject and how um, you know, leadership plays a role also in supervision of social service activities which are normally routed through the social service organization. Now, what is leadership? Can anyone tell me? What is leadership according to you? Anyone? Okay, so leadership is nothing but the ability and the capacity to lead, 
to lead an organization or to lead a team, to set the right example, to get the people into, or the team members into consensus, that is get them together to arrive at a common understanding to achieve the common goal of the charitable organization or the social service organization or whatever is the vision and the mission of that particular organization. A true leader is a person who would um, basically encourage a participative decision-making process, who would encourage and motivate the team members towards performing their best in the organization. And in our subject, it is social service organization. So what does leadership, uh, how leadership plays a role in the social service organization is by getting the consensus of all the team members in the organization and helping them to route their work towards the common goal of achieving the mission and the vision of that particular social service organization. In today's class, just to set the perspective as an introductory class, we are going to learn about the type of leadership. Leadership, as we, as we, I mean, as we know, it's actually a skill. Leading an organization is a skill. They say that not all are born leaders, but leaders are made as well. But, you know, they say managing is an art and leadership is a skill, but I would say that leadership is a skill as well as an art. And it depends also about, upon the internal traits of every human being, apart from that, how it is polished, how the leadership within skills within a person, the traits within a person is polished how they inculcate values from their experience, probably their school, the university, and their work experience. They inculcate the values, they imbibe it, and how it shapes them into the leader that is required for any particular organization. Now, the type of leadership skills that needs to be exhibited in an organization depends, again, from one organization to another. Now, philanthropic organizations or charitable organizations or social service organizations require a type of leadership that is normally people-oriented and that is uh, which actually actually seeks the welfare of the people and seeks to get the uh, you know the consensus of all the team members and again I'm reiterating rooting it towards achievement of the common goal of that particular social service organization. Having said that, let us go to our slides. If you have any questions, you can ask me. As we move further, uh, before we, in fact, uh, while this gets uploaded, I'd like to remind you of your assignments that are already posted online in your Google Classroom. Please be vigilant and submit your assignments on time. That's an opportunity for you to grab maximum marks. Uh, as you know, it carries 25 marks each. That is 50 marks total. That is assignment one and assignment two. So be vigilant on the date. Uh, delayed assignments will not be encouraged. However, there will be one mark deduction per day of default. Now, since the slides have already begun here, let's go through it. Now, it says that leadership is a significant factor that is an important factor in every organization, be it the corporate sector or even the social service organization. So therefore, it is a very important factor in every sphere or sector. Now, a good leader not only leads, but motivates his team. It's not, not just the question of leading the team and telling the team what to do, but also to motivate the team towards achieving that what to do. In managing social service organization, the art of managing must be enforced with the skill of leading, motivating, and accomplishing the goal. So a leader sees not just the task that needs to be accomplished, but the ultimate goals that needs to be achieved Seeing through the vision and mission of the organization, being conscious that the vision and mission of the organization are not 
displaced. So this is how I worded it, that the role of a leader in a, in a philanthropic organization is that his major task is that he, see, he has to see that the ultimate goal of the organization is accomplished and just not bother about the immediate minor, uh, you know, goals or tasks that are there in hand, but to, you know, really focus on the ultimate goal, which is seeped through the vision and mission of the organization and he has to be conscious or not to be oblivious of the vision and mission of the organization and therefore the vision and the mission of the organization should not be displaced so the leader goes towards the ultimate goal of the charitable organization or social service organization he works towards the ultimate goal of the organization bearing in mind the vision and mission of the organization for example if the charitable organization or the social service organization is, uh, you know, the main uh, mission of it is to obliterate illiteracy or is to wipe out uh, poverty, for example, or to even to, uh, you know, encourage literacy so they would have literacy campaigns and so on. So he has to bear in mind that the goal of the organization is to see that a particular area gets receives or achieves 100% literacy. So he has to work towards that goal and wrote it through the team members, encourage the team members, and he has to establish even short term goals bearing in mind the long term goal and the vision and the mission of the organization about achieving 100% literacy in a particular area, for example. So therefore, he should, you know, concentrate on the goal on the vision and the mission. And he has to see that he executes the task to his team, through his team. So, so he not only manages the team, but he also should be able to lead the team. So leadership and management, therefore, are interconnected. In my opinion, though, there are many management experts who say that leadership is distinct from management. Of course, it is, but they say that it need not be really interconnected. But I would say that leadership and management are certainly interconnected. However, it's not necessary that all managers need to be uh, all leaders need to be managers but all managers certainly have to be leaders so when we are talking about managing of social service organization practically speaking they also have to have the ability to lead the organization or to lead the team towards achieving the common goal and leading in the sense also not only getting the uh, you know achieving uh, not just getting the work done through the uh, the team members but also you know achieve the ultimate goal of the organization next is as mary parker Follett in her triatized gram 1995 page 168 she puts it it's quite interesting that she says that at essentials of leadership of the greatest importance is the ability to grasp a total situation. She says, there is a necessity to grasp, have hold of the entire situation as a whole. And the chief mistake in thinking of leadership as resting wholly or personally lies probably in the fact that the executive leader is not a leader of men only, but of something we are learning to call the total situation. So this includes facts, present and potential, aims and purposes, and men. So out of the welter of facts, Facts. That is a fact which keep, you know, deviating or which the graph of facts keep, uh, you know, changing out of the welter of facts, experience, desires and aims, a leader must find the unifying thread. He must see the common, you know, he must find that common point, you know, out of the welter of the facts, the experience, the desires, the aims, and also the minds of the team members, you must find that unifying thread and you must see as a whole and not a kaleidoscope of pieces. You must see the relationship between all the different factors in a situation. The higher up you go, the more ability you have to have of this kind because you have a wide range of facts from which to seize the relations, she says. That's Mary Parker Follett in a Graham, 1995 at 168. And basically, she's trying to point out that a good leader sees the entire situation and or he sees the situation as a whole and not just the facts in pieces or 
you know, not through the kaleidoscope of pieces. Next is the Anglo-Saxon laid means a path or a road. So it comes from the word, the Anglo-Saxon word laid, which means a path or a road. Now, and it is related to the verb lidin, that is to travel or proceed. That's how the word leader has come. So normally in a social service organization or a setup, people or the workforce is divided into teams that are led by a team leader. And everyone in the team is motivated to work towards the achievement of a goal. And this is how a normal social service organization setup is. There is a particular team leader and probably if it is a huge organization, it is divided into teams. Or if it is a small organization, you just have one you know, manager who will be leading the entire team, depend, depending upon what is the charter of that particular organization. So generally, there are different forms of leadership, by and large, just generally speaking, there are different types of leadership, like you have this autocratic leadership, we'll go to it in detail during this class, democratic leadership, laser sphere, which is a French term, the coaching or the coach master, transformational leadership, charismatic leadership, bureaucratic, visionary, pace setter, and servant. And apart from that, we also have some other forms of leadership, such as, uh, you know, the adaptive leadership, leader as a gardener or a gardener leader and a citizen leader. Let's see what are, you know, what each of uh, these terms mean, the autocratic leader or uh, the leader who is autocratic in nature. Now, the caption that best suits an autocratic leader is my way or the highway. So he's a person who normally is aggressive. He or she is normally has the traits of being aggressive in nature, authoritative and believes in exercising power or control. However, is positively goal oriented. So here, normally, if you would see a person is quite aggressive and gets his work done and he exercises power of control, so he could be categorized as an autocratic leader. And however, it cannot be denied that he is, positively speaking, a goal-oriented leader. He believes in achievement of goals, is quite strict about achieving goals. He might even lay down strict parameters for the team to achieve the goals. So such a leader is mostly a perfectionist and abhors delays and tardiness. A person with an autocratic leadership style expects promptness. That is, he expects, you know, swiftness, swift delivery of action and perfection from the people around them. Such an environment would breed demotivation sometimes. It, demot it might demotivate the team members and it would breed demotivation in the air and the workers may or may not be motivated to work. It depends. And I believe that the only motivation in such an environment would be retaining their job probably for financial stability or to meet the ends. An example of this kind is military, but I would, we can add on to this uh, aspect here saying that with respect to military, autocratic leadership is a must because the type of setup it has and the type of demands of work is there in a military or in army. So, you know, they need an autocratic leader and autocratic leader is normally well suited for the job environment of, you know, military service. But of course, may not be considered as an asset in any other setup, such as a corporate setup or a philanthropic setup, especially in today's times. Now, the next form of leadership or the next model of leadership is Laser spell leadership, also called as delegative leadership style. But the French word laser spell is, it, it means, uh, you know, let them do, which can be translated as let it be in English. Such a leader reposes trust and confidence in the team. Or the subordinates, as the case may be, and may monitor periodically by giving the team the leverage of decision making, but is, of course, not oblivious of the goal. So such a leader normally would, you know, delegate the task of certain decision making to the team, would give the team the leverage to decide on certain matters and say, that, OK, let them be, let them decide, but not uh, you know, he, he or she will not be oblivious of the overall goal, of course, and will somewhere monitor the team. However, would give the leverage 
of decision making and to an extent of freedom to act in certain circumstances to the team. So this is a laser spare leader or delegated leadership style. And it's a French term, which means let it be. Sometimes this laser spare uh, that we learned in the previous slide, laser spare leadership style, sometimes it uh, you know, proves to be encouraging in certain setup where the, the, the team members, you know, have decision or delegated decision making capacity and that helps them in the process to take certain decisions and that also is a motivation factor. The next kind of leader that you would see or the, the model of leadership is democratic leadership or participatory leadership style. So leadership, uh, democratic leadership or participative leadership style, it follows a collaborative pattern. It, that is, it is a more of a participative style. It, is, it follows a collaborative pattern where the leader makes major and critical decision. It may be consultative in nature, the leader may consult with the team and see more often in small business setups and you know people's ideas and opinions are listened to before we move further just in case we disconnect please join back attendance will be taken at the end of this class next is a coach the next model or the type or the category of leadership is a coach or a coach master. So this form of leadership is an amalgamation of democratic and laser sped leadership styles. This form of leadership is goal oriented and monitored regularly to nip setbacks and track the progress towards the achievement of goals. Here the leader may go to the extent of training the team and thereby is more seen as an investment and it may take time for results to shine through. So this is basically a person who acts like a coach or he acts like the master and he monitors the team regularly. And as and when there are setbacks or limitations or problems that arise, he tries to nip it in the bud and he tracks regularly the progress of achievement of the ultimate goal in an organization. Next is transformational leadership. Transformational leadership is an interesting model and it's normally seen in social service organizations as well. Transformation leadership is broad in its outlook and creates an open work culture with transparent communication. And such leaders normally set challenging goals and believe in teamwork. So their priority is not the minuscule work that is you know, the short term goals or the short term targets that are to be met. For example, while executing a literacy campaign, there are different strategies. So it's not about you know, devising a strategy for a literacy campaign. It's not just they concentrate on devising a strategy to the, for the literacy campaign, but they, their main goal is achieving the target. Say for example, you know, for this year, we would achieve 30% of you know, illiteracy, would increase the literacy in this area by 30%. So example, so they would concentrate on that and not just the, the you know, the, the, the steps towards the goal. So not towards the minuscule work towards the goal, but they would they aim for them. Their eyes are fixed on the final goal, but they would strategize their way to the goal. But the ultimate target, that's what they say, is that they concentrate on the ultimate target to be achieved. So example, here we have Sir Winston Churchill. He was a transformational leader. You can read his books, it's interesting. Next is the charismatic leader. Now, who is a charismatic leader or charismatic leadership style? A charismatic leader knows how to get his work done and is intelligent and smart. He's a people's leader and such a person is confident and involves themselves in their sign. Normally, a charismatic leader is also called as a people's leader because he goes and moves within the organization. He talks to each and every subordinate staff. He discusses the goals to be achieved. He talks to them. He is he or she is a person who has this particular charisma and he attracts the people around or he or she attracts the people around them. And they, when they, you know, uh, say something, you know, the team members are willing to do it. 
So they are mostly confident. The basic trait that you'd see in them is they are confident people and, it, and they involve and integrate themselves uh, in, you know, or interview themselves very smoothly into the assignment um, and, you know, uh, motivate their team members and they're concerned about each and every team member, each and every uh, team member's performance and they would encourage each and every team member. So the, mostly they are a kind of people's leader. Next is a bureaucratic leader. A bureaucratic leader follows and makes his team follow rules. He may set rules and sees that the team follows the rules. Next is the visionary leader. Now, this bureaucratic leader, before we move further, is normally seen in traditional setups. It's normally a traditional form of leadership style. Bureaucratic leadership style is a traditional form of leadership style. And, uh, you know, it can be categorized under a traditional form of leadership style. You have two types of, uh, you know, you can broadly, uh, you know, bifurcate uh, it as traditional, le traditional leadership style and contemporary leadership style. Contemporary leadership style example would be for you charismatic leader, transformational leader or even a visionary leader, but a bureaucratic leader would come under the, the, the category of a, a traditional leadership model. Next, we have visionary leader. A visionary leader is not concerned with minor technical details, but he concentrates on strategizing to achieve the goal and sets the vision. So his goal is again, focused on the vision. So it, they envision the growth of the company or set up and follow that planned action towards a vision. So this kind of a leader normally, he strategizes a path towards achieving the final goal of the organization or the target goal of the organization and they kind of uh, you know devise a trajectory towards achieving that particular goal so this is a visionary leader next is a pace setter leader such a leader believes in achieving fast results he is fast paced and is time oriented so he or she may not you know uh, really uh, you know, solicit much of opinions uh, from the team members or from the, you know, the, the peer groups in the team, but will rather believe in swift execution of tasks. He would probably set short-term goals. He would probably set up the trajectory and then would say, okay, begin with achieving these goals. And he's normally time-oriented and he believes in achieving, uh, you know, faster progress. Sometimes this is a boon, but sometimes it turns out to be a bane. Next is a servant leader. A servant leader is a people's leader and he concerns himself with the welfare of the team, including employee satisfaction. This is normally, uh, you know, you could see it in political organizations or, you know, politically motivated organizations, a servant leader. You could also find it also in the corporate sector. Sometimes you would see even a servant leader there, but such a leadership style also uh, is, at times, you know, popular in achieving the target. Next is adaptive leadership. Adaptive leadership, again, you could categorize it as a contemporary form of leadership style. So this form of leadership is more relevant to social service organization in addition to transformational leadership. Now, the form of this form of leadership uh, normally conceptualizes leadership as recognizing the mutual impact of behavior and this form focuses on practicing uh, practices that are congruent with learning advancement and adaptation so it's supportive in its structure rather than controlling so it is adaptive leadership it's it keeps itself aligned with learning and development and adapting to the new systems that are coming up as a result of their learning and advanced uh, techniques, you know, which are merged into their plans and they adapt towards the new strategies. Mm -hmm. So this is supportive in a structure rather than controlling. So leader as a gardener, a leader as a gardener normally is a Christian concept. And this model of leadership was used by Hazard and uh, Spelstra 
in 2011 who opined that a leader as a gardener is a gardener. So the leader could be seen as a gardener who tends the flowers and ensures that the fertilizer is working. So leader as a gardener is yet another category of leadership style. Next is, or a model of leadership style. Next is a citizen's leader or, or, or a citizen leader, which is when a citizen or citizens are granted the power and responsibility to make certain decisions in the social service sector and the opinions from public are solicited or are invited. So it may be that the citizens may be empowered to protect and act in the best interest of other citizens. For example, you have research conducted by students on social topic that would contribute towards a wide social cause and that probably would be incorporated for the development of the society. For example, you prepare a thesis on a particular problem that is existing around your area or, or your region, and then you, you know, structure the material and then you can submit it to, a, to the government or to the relevant authority there or relevant body, and probably they would take your opinions and incorporate it for the development of the society. So this is a, a, a form of leadership style, a citizen leader, whether citizens are given uh, or you know, they're granted the power and responsibility to make certain decisions also. This is one of the examples. Research is one of the examples. Apart from that is where sometimes government solicit opinion